Greetings, and welcome to the Saved by Nostalgia podcast. I love the power glove. It's so bad. No! I feel the need. The need for speed. Sweep the leg. You have a problem with that. Got her alive. You are coming with me. Look I what you it. did, you little jerk. Murdoch. I'm coming to get you. Get busy living. You get busy dying. You are next. Welcome into the show, Roddy Shell. I'm Noah Groniger alongside Flint Schweitzer. And we are here on Save by Nostalgia. How's everything going for you, Mr. Shell? So far, so good. I'm just getting through this pan- pandemic and I'm going to start going out of town starting next week. I want to talk to you about that. Uh, you're going to be at Mayberry Days in Mount Airy, North Carolina, next Thursday, September 23rd at 3 p.m. And that's going to be at the Andy Griffith Playhouse. Tickets are around $20 to $25. You can find those on surreyart.org. Can you mm-hmm. talk to us a little bit about kind of what people can expect from the show when they arrive there? Well, I, this will be my sixth year, sixth straight year. Well, there was not last year because we didn't. You know, because of the pandemic, but uh, this is the sixth year that I've, I've worked there. And what I do is I I, uh, I have films, and I, I I come on and I just talk about my my life, starting with uh, you know where I got started. I worked in Vegas for 50 years as a nightclub comedian, and then uh, you know I did Comer Pile for five or well, seven years, including the Jim Neighbors Hour. And I did a couple of Andy Griffith guest shots. And so I talk a lot about Andy and Don Knotts, who were very close to me at that time. And, uh, and the years that uh, uh, I appeared on those shows. And it was just, uh, it's interesting. I also show some outtakes that are pretty funny, you know, from the show. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, that's, that's about it. We talked about... Uh, 45 to an hour. And so far I've had kudos. That's great. What's it like for you, Ronnie, when you reconnect with, with fans of these shows, these are timeless shows, whether it be your role as Duke Slater um, on Gilmer pile or on Andy Griffith, whenever you come back and you, you go to some events like this, what's it like for you interacting with these fans, these people that hold these shows so dear to their hearts all these years later? Well, you know, I found out that I I was told that there's a, Still, I think it was five million people are still into the Andy Griffith uh, Mayberry days, and uh, the uh, on Mayberry days we have uh, they have thirty six thousand people in that small town for four or five days, and uh, I I get to know a, a lot of them because uh, they confide in me as fans and uh, I tell them all the things that have happened during those years and uh, it's it's just fun it's just fun meeting them all well Ronnie you said you were a nightclub comedian there for a long time in Vegas I wanted to ask you just yesterday uh, we lost the great Norm McDonald a comedian yeah. I don't know if you had ever run into him or seen never him and appreciated never, him from afar on like Saturday Night Live and I respected his uh, his talent but I never got a chance to meet him. But I have worked with most of the comedians uh, that are around today, either on television or uh, you know in nightclubs. Uh, and in in Vegas, I had quite a uh, time working and opening for a lot of big stars. You know, Sammy Davis, uh, Glenn Campbell, Wayne Newton, of course, and uh, and. Uh, it was it was fun. It was fun, really fun. Well, kind but of talk. About- what happened was after uh, the forty sixth or seventh year of going there, uh, twice a year, I I I found myself just doing the shows and then uh, staying in the in the uh, hotel that they assigned me to because I you know I'd been through the Vegas thing and I'd seen most of the acts and most of the shows and. And so I just sort of said, I think this is it. And uh, 
at the 50th year, I said, bye-bye. And uh, <laughs> I've never regretted it, although I have a lot of great memories of, of working with most of, like I said, most of the people and most of the comedians. Uh, I, I, you know, I did, uh, I did guest shops on uh, Mork and Mindy. I worked with Robin for two weeks. And, uh, and I worked with Rickles, Don Rickles, three or four times. People like that. And it was thrill. It was thrilling for me. Well, kind of talk about uh, Las Vegas. You were there kind of at the beginning when it was first being forged. You know, there was, you talk about Don Rickles. I just watched the movie Casino the other day. He's uh -huh. amazing in Casino. And just how the, how the town changed. It's so corporate now. You know, the strip is yeah. uh, two and, miles and long. Well, I, yeah. I've got to be honest with you. When I first started, it was owned by, as we used to do. The mob. And uh, backstage and, you know, underground. And, uh, and they, they loved entertainers. So they treated them royally. And uh, we had all, a lot of privileges. And, uh, and there were a lot of shows. Practically every hotel had a headliner. And uh, this was before they started doing uh, uh, shows that were just one person, uh, you know, like uh, some of the singers that started doing one 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 nighters, and uh, they would stay stay on at the hotels for like a year, or something like that. And uh, so I got to work with all of them. Uh, like, uh, what's the young girl who's trying to get rid of her uh, father? Britney Spears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got out. I got out of that just before. Uh, I, I my last year was one of her first years. Wow. <laughs> and that was that was nice. But then uh, they start doing uh, uh, Broadway type shows, and now. When you walk down or drive down the strip, you don't see the headlining uh, comedians and singers that we used to work with. It's all set show. Every once in a while, there's you know there's a, a, a singer who stays there for months at a time, and uh, it's just different. It's, yeah, it's not any worse, or, or 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 should I say, it's still fun, but it's different. Yeah, absolutely is. And I, I hate to stay on this theme, but we also recently yeah. lost the great Ed Asner. He's from Kansas City, Missouri, just like we are here. You yeah, Ted, had the pleasure Ted of working with him. Very close. Uh, I did when I was early on, see, about 63 or 64, I did a, a movie with him called Gus, a Disney movie. Yeah. And uh, I got to know him real well. In fact, <laughs> sort of a cute story. Uh, I was thrilled to work with him because I thought he was a great talent, and, and I invited over him over to my house for dinner. And uh, so I went up, went home, and told my wife. And she said, "Oh God, it was thrilling, great." So he came over all by himself, and uh, she fixed up a great dinner. And <laughs> I said, "Would you like to have a drink?" And he said, "Yeah, I'll have a drink." So I said, "Okay, I'll be right back." So I went in and, uh, to fix him a drink in the kitchen. I came back and he was sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Ed. That yeah. sounds like Ed. Yeah, That's he, amazing. He was with Second City for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's he right. Quite, I never expected that, but he was quite funny. Oh, absolutely. Of, you, you, you guys know that most of the stuff he did was serious. But um, he was ribbing us when he was on with us for sure. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he had a good sense of humor. He, oh, you did yourself? Yeah. A couple years ago. Yeah. Couple, he did a great job on Cobra Kai too, the, the show that's just been on Netflix. He was awesome on that. And it's good that we got to see him one more time on a very meaningful show yeah. like Cobra Kai that's so big on Netflix. And speaking of that, Ronnie, you know, there's no hiding it. We're children of the 80s and 90s. We grew up on Saved by the Bell. And in 1989, you yourself, Ronnie, you are a guest on Saved by the Bell. You guest star on a show. Um, Save That Tiger. You are Principal Stingwell. Just take Thank us you. back to that Thank and you. what you remember of that. It was just such a great appearance. Stinky the, Stinky the principal. That's you right. Know? The prankster. <laughs> well, I got to I got to tell you, I I did during those years uh, after uh, Jim Neighbors Hour and everything like that. I did. I I think I've done most of the 
the sitcom. I did three uh, Happy Days and uh, and uh, uh, who were the three girls? The three Golden days? Girls. Huh? The the Golden, Golden girls. girls. Yeah, did that. Uh, that was a funny script because uh, the very first day they handed me the script and and uh, and I looked and I and in, in the end of the script I date the <laughs> Arthur. And I, I said to the director, I don't think I, I'm too young for her, and, and I don't think I would date her and everything. Well, if you watch the episode, we go out at the end. I date her. That's great. But I did uh, uh, I did all those shows, and uh, what, what were we talking about? Uh, the original point. Something Say about Say by the Bell with uh, you well, know. Say by the Bell. You had those great yeah, scenes with Dennis college, Haskins. With, yeah, Elizabeth Berkeley and. Uh, and uh, um, the guy who passed away, funny guy. Dustin Diamond. Yeah, Dustin, he got a little trouble. Yeah, uh, but you had some just classic scenes there with, with Dennis Haskins. You guys had this amazing back and forth where he, he's, you know, prank, you know, everything you do is a prank and you're just, but yeah, yeah we always, right. we always described was, your character as maniacal. You were a <laughs> maniacal character yeah. on that show. Just the I perfect like laugh. Playing, I like playing those kind of <laughs> characters. And I had, I, I remember uh, when I signed, they, we used to do that, that, they used to do that show at the NBC studios. Yeah. And uh, where I lived close by at that time. And I would go over early just to, you know, be around the kids and stuff like that. And uh, I had a great time. And I, I added a little bit to the script with my maniacal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. We absolutely loved it, man. But yeah. uh, I got to talk to you about two of my favorites, is, along with you, Ronnie, is Dick Van Dyke, Jerry Van Dyke. You had the honor or pleasure of working with both of them, Dick Van Dyke on the new Dick Van Dyke show, Jerry Van Dyke on Coach. I believe you're on Yes Year as well. Talk twice. about the Dick Van Dyke. Twice. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Jerry and I go way back. Jerry was best man at my wedding. Wow. Yeah, so I knew him pretty well. And uh, we, we ought to got to know each other when we were both in the service and start doing shows, you know. I was the uh, traveling comedian with the Air Force Dance Band out of Washington, D.C., the Airmen of Note, which was a great job. All, all I did was, you know, go around the world opening for those guys or doing a show during their intermission. And Jerry did a, a show called Cops and Blue, which at the time was a, a comedy show featuring uh, the best of uh, Army, Navy, and Air Force, and uh, so we got to know each other that way, and uh, then when it was over, uh, we all got out, and Jerry, of course, had had more pull than I did, because he was a Van Dyke, and uh, <laughs> he, was, he was very, he was a very loyal friend, and I got, so he became best man at my wedding. Dick, uh, you know, I, I, I don't care who knows this, but my feeling is that Jerry was 10 times funnier than Dick. Dick. I agree. Dick had a great talent. Uh, in fact, he was uh, Fred Astaire's favorite dancer. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah. Great song and dance man. Very yeah. good. Someone asked him who his favorite uh, song and dance man. And he said, uh, uh, Fred, uh, uh, Dick Van Dyke. And so when I worked with him, it, it was thrilling, uh, you know, but it, Jerry was just naturally a funny guy. Yeah, Dick was more the slapstick kind of guy, so yeah. the physical yeah. comedy. Exactly, and uh, well, he's still doing, still doing stuff. Absolutely, yeah, he's still going strong there. I believe ninety-five years old. So yeah, that's, poor Jerry died. Uh, I know about ten years ago. Yep. And but he he made it. I think he made a lot of good money on uh, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of my favorite shows because of Jerry Van Dyke. He's amazing on there, but. Kind of one last thing before we go here, Ronnie, I wanted to ask you, what well, did no, it mean? I got, a, I got about another half hour with of material I want to do. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm fun, let's keep you, I'm fun let's, you. Let's keep you all night. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, where are you guys? Where are you guys? We're in Kansas City, Missouri. You know, I worked there many times. Really? That's what you told me on Facebook. Yeah. I, I worked there uh, twice. Once with Jim Neighbors. We toured around the country and, and once with uh, 
Jack Cassidy and Shirley Jones, who became good friends of mine. And it was at a, at a, a park, open air park. Okay. And, uh, the thing was they had a rule that if you're on five, I don't know, it was five minutes or 10 minutes and it started raining, if you made the 10 minutes, then you were paid. If you didn't, <laughs> guess who stayed on during the rain and the thunder and the lightning? <laughs> right. There's our good friend, Roddy Shell up there. It ain't right, yeah. Being a trooper. <laughs> but it was fun. I love Kansas City. God, they got some great restaurants there. Yes. Absolutely. We love our barbecue here. But Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Very much, yeah. Ronnie, what did it mean to you to get the role of Duke Slater and Gomer Pyle, USMC? I mean, steady work, 92 episodes, getting to work alongside the great Jim Neighbors. Who I love, by the way. You know, Jim Neighbors, I'll tell you in a second, but Jim Neighbors is the only man I have ever met who didn't have one enemy in the world. Mm. Everybody loved him when they got to know him. He was a great guy and... Uh, his private life was a little different than mine, but uh, uh, he didn't bother anybody and, uh, <laughs> that I know of. And uh, we became really good friends. So I went on the road with him during the times when we weren't doing the show. And uh, he was a wonderful, wonderful human being. You know, he was Catholic from Alabama. Can you believe that? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> and every time we'd go in the plane, uh, he'd always, just before he took off, he'd do the sign of the cross. So I went right with him. Yeah. And I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> so so uh, uh, that, that was a great time. Uh, how I got Duke Slater was uh, I, we both started at a nightclub in San Francisco called the Purple Onion. And uh, we had both worked there. And then we, when we came down to L.A., uh, I worked all the venues there, but one of the one of the venues I worked fairly regularly was a place called the Horn. Can anyone ever talk about that? Uh, I haven't heard of the Horn, huh? No, I haven't. Santa Monica. And okay. It was, it was jammed every night and uh, mostly musical acts, stuff like that. But uh, so Jim worked there, and uh, that's how he was discovered by Andy Griffith. Uh, Andy Griffith went to see him uh, on the advice of his manager and my manager, Dick Link. And uh, when he saw him, he came out, I remember he told Dick, he says, I don't, I don't know uh, what exactly what he does, but what he does, he's the greatest. <laughs> well, let's sign him up. And that's how he got the uh, uh, Andy Griffith show. And what happened was when they did the spinoff, uh, my manager, Dick Link, uh, said, well, what? I, I think I can get you an audition for a part. And he said, it's going to be a serious part, so it's not going to be funny. And I said, I don't care. I, I like the money. Yeah. And so I went and I, I, I got to, in this office, and in the office was uh, Sheldon Leonard, who was the big, the big high mucky muck of all. Right? Oh, yeah. And Carl Reiner, Carl Reiner, who I got to know very well because I did some shows with him. And uh, and they liked what I did, and uh, so that's how I got signed to, to do Duke. I did three episodes in the beginning there, and then on the fourth episode, something happened, and I and I I just blended right in with the show and uh, and, and the characters and my character, and they kept me for the ninety some episodes. And, and incredible, and <laughs> yeah. I, Absolutely. And, and what a career, Ronnie. And, you know, just to be able to, to do this with you and talk with you is just such a pleasure in every sense of the word. And you're a part of the American lexicon. You're a part of the Ameri the fabric of American culture with the, your well, roles. And I hope you know I, that. And I hope you realize that. I, well, sometimes I do, but I, I, <laughs> it's, nice, it's nice to hear. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's what we're here for. <laughs> tell me about, I, I'm not fam that familiar with your, your format. Is it, is it on camera? We do so many different things, Ronnie. We do, we've done audio interviews all the way up till last year when Zoom became popular. We really wanted to get it out there on the video end because we people are, you know, listeners love to see 
the face of the person. They definitely don't really care about seeing our faces, but they want to see what our guests look like. And it just makes it more personal. We just kind of started doing the video thing about a year ago. Well, I want to uh, come back and show, show you guys some outtakes uh, that only Jim Neighbors and I have copies of that it's hysterical. It's about 10 minutes of, of faux pas and uh, that you really get a kick out of from, from the uh, Gomer Pound show. That would be just tremendous, Ronnie. Uh, we will do it. Thank you so much. Okay, have a about, I, I think I have $2,000. I think that would be. That would, that would clear it. I, that, I was going to offer, I was going to offer four. So two's a deal. Well, <laughs> we're going to have to run this by, uh, I don't know, Universal or Fox or whoever. We will. We will do it. from Missouri? Yep. yep. Born, Born and, and raised. raised. Yes, we are. I'm, I'm uh, going to do a show. Well, as you know, next week uh, in uh, Mount Airy, North Carolina, where Andy was born. But then I'm going to do another one in November at a theater. And believe it or not, Lebanon. But not Lebanon in the Middle East, but Lebanon. No, Lebanon, Ohio. Missouri. Huh? Oh, Ohio. There's a Lebanon, Missouri, too. Yeah, there's, there's there Lebanon, is, yes. Ohio. I'm going to do a show there. So well, I don't turn down anything anymore. <laughs> uh, well, as you shouldn't. You're a treasure, Ronnie. Thank, oh, thank you so much for doing it with us. Let's do it again soon, my friend. Listen, I enjoyed being with you guys. And oh. uh, I do want to come back and show you. Anytime, Absolutely. Ronnie, you bet. Okay. Thank well, you, we'll sir. In a couple of months. And absolutely. We're going to get it set. We're going to get it scheduled. Well, you're Kansas City fans, right? We are. Oh, yeah. Patrick Mahomes yeah, right here. They are adamant fans. We are. In, the, in Kansas City, that's all they talked about. That's right. That's, that's where we're, we're in the it. epicenter. <laughs> we're in the epicenter of that. <laughs> oh, well, thanks so much, Ronnie. You take care. Hey, my pleasure. It was an absolute honor. Thank you. Okay, pal.